Okay, so what I'm seeing so far is that this unit is temping uh, just a little bit high, not bad. Okay, now I need to verify that their thermometer is accurate because mine's saying something different. And this one's saying about 39. Yeah, a little funky. Okay, so I've just got some thermometers in here to see what's accurate. I do see a problem in this coil. This coil right here has got a fan motor that is spinning slower. So that fan motor is not working. This fan motor is kicking ass and there's ice behind that. So we definitely need to get that ice defrosted before we can go any further in the troubleshooting. And then over here on this coil, I don't see any ice at this time. So we'll see, but if I got a hose in here, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know, blow, uh, blow this one through with some water too, just to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get that ice on the other coil defrosted, and then we'll go from there. I just wanna point something out. If you don't know anything about beer coolers, I'm not a beverage technician, but I know enough about a beer walk-in. These are some blast fans, okay? They're booster fans, and what they're doing, if you follow the, the, the duct or the conduit, whatever you wanna call it, it's just a plastic conduit, it's going into the tower chase and it's blowing the cold air directly from the evaporator coil into the tower chase. Now there should be an exit somewhere. You always wanna find the exit, which would be right here. And you wanna make sure you feel air blowing out. And I do, I've got air blowing out of this one and air blowing out of this one. So that indicates that both of these booster fans are working correctly. Another problem that I'm seeing is they've got a little thermometer here that tells them their, you know, temperatures, okay, and they do use that for temperatures. And uh, if you look at the top, the sensing bolt is going into a little cup and it's supposed to have liquid in it. That sound is a hollow cup. So there's no liquid in that guy. So we do need to get some glycol in there. So that way that's tempting the right are seeing the right temperatures. They'll be getting error messages on their beer system for that. So we'll make sure we get some glycol in there too. So I'm a water hose person when I de-ice walking. Much faster, much more efficient. I don't let the water drip onto the floor ever. Just go nice and slow. I find it, in my opinion, is faster than a torch, but to each their own. Okay, we got everything defrosted, cleaned up. Now we're back up and running. I'm gonna go upstairs, check the charge. And I need to check the superheat, but we're frosting on our distributor lines pretty good, so we'll make sure everything's good. It's also nice and warm in here, so could just be nothing. So this is definitely a problem. You see how this one's running? Go over here to this coil. There's no temperature change on the distributor line. The solenoid valve doesn't even feel like it's running, so we're going to have to diagnose why this coil is not doing anything. So the solenoid coil has 208 volts. And... It's not energizing. So we'll go grab a solenoid magnet and see if... That is the sound you're looking for. So, we'll have to go get a solenoid coil for this guy. All right, so I'm up here on the roof. Uh, what I found was that the sight glass was actually flashing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and top off the charge right now. It's still pretty warm in the box, so I'm gonna be careful about clearing it too quick, but we're getting there. Um, I have a technician uh, picking up the solenoid coil for me and bringing it to me So I'm gonna go ahead and get this done and hopefully by the time he gets here We'll be ready to put that on right now. I just have that solenoid magnet down there running it trying to cool down the space So this is the first coil and this one's the one running 20 degrees superheat So we might have something going on with the valve. I don't know. I went ahead and adjusted the superheat lower Pulled the stem down out of the valve to reduce the superheat and then uh, I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and see if we get any noticeable change. So 
So I'm going to give this one more adjustment, but I think we got a valve going bad or possibly a solenoid valve going bad, not feeding correctly because I can't control the superheat on this valve. Next thing we're going to do is I want you guys to see what's going on here. I just realized something. That's the thermostat bulb, right? Okay. And that's not just a drain line. That's insulated with heat tape. But it doesn't really make sense to mount the thermostat bulb on that. And then also, they have this thing set for 50 degrees, which is kind of strange too, but it's maintaining like 38, so there's some funky stuff going on with this stat. This whole job is turning into a debacle. This is our air temperature right now, it's 33 degrees in the box, that's what we want to control. Okay, I ended up getting this superheat pretty much dialed in, okay, I'm still a little not happy with the way that valve's operating. So I'm wondering if maybe the spring inside is screwed up. Who knows? There's something going on. But obviously we can't forget that that solenoid valve was doing something funky too because it burnt the coil out. So it's possible there's something stuck in there. Who knows? Okay. So this coil seems to be working okay. They want to maintain about 34 degrees in here, so I'm currently adjusting the temperature. I'm still waiting for the solenoid coil to come. I have another tech bringing it to me right now. I also had to put seven pounds of gas in this thing too because the sight glass is flashing. So there's obviously a leak somewhere. So what I'm gonna do as soon as I get the temperature controller dialed in exactly where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the condensing unit and uh, do a leak check on the system. And then we'll go from there. Basically, I'm gonna get them operating and then I'm getting them a big list of stuff and then we'll submit quotes for everything. All right, so we've got a leak on the soft plug underneath the receiver. That's where that seven pounds came from. And then we're also picking up a little bit of a leak on these quick connects. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these quick connects out, put a proper receiver on there. If you notice Great. this, we can't pump it down to change the dryer. You have to recover all the gas out of the system. So we'll put a bigger receiver or a better receiver with a valve. So that was definitely interesting. Um, we had a service call on a beer walk-in not working that they were saying it was temping in the 42, 43 range. Their beer was foaming. So I went ahead and found that the right side evaporator coil was partially iced up and the right side evaporator fan motor in that coil was spinning slower than the other fan motor. Shut the system down de-ice the coil, clean the coil, clean the left side coil, replace the evaporator fan motor, then turn the system on and found that the left side evaporator was not running. The, it, was, it did not have a difference in temperature basically. I found that the solenoid coil for the left side evaporator was not working properly. Went ahead and called one of my technicians, got him heading out here to change, to bring me the solenoid coil because I was about an hour away from a supply house. Went ahead and while I was waiting for him, put my gauges on the unit and found that the system was severely low on refrigerant. So I went ahead and topped it off. It took about eight pounds of gas, uh, got the system uh, running. Uh, it was pretty close to temperature and I cleared the sight glass on the system. Then I found uh, that the evaporators, I went to check the superheat on both the evaporators and I found that the left side evaporator was running about 20 something degrees superheat while the right side evaporator was running anywhere from eight to 10 degrees. It was kind of ranging between the two. Went to go make an adjustment on the superheat on the left side coil and I really didn't get much of an adjustment. The first adjustment I made, I may have gotten like a degree down to 18 and then I got it down to 16 and then all of a sudden it went down to one degrees. So, and I really all together turned the valve maybe one full turn, maybe a, a turn and a half, like not very much. And when I turned it the last time, I heard the valve just start hissing and flooding and who knows what it was doing inside. So I backed the superheat off, got it to, to go, you know, a little bit higher, but the lowest I could get it where it would maintain was 16 degrees. I could not get it any lower without dropping it down to one degree. So there's something inside there. Um, on the solenoid valve, what I did was I threw a solenoid magnet on it while I was doing all of that. So that way I could just watch it operate. Um, I believe that there's something stuck inside that solenoid valve that caused the coil to go bad. And I believe that same thing is affecting the expansion valve possibly, you know, there's something going on inside there. 
regardless, we got the system operational. My guy showed up. We put the solenoid coil on there. Then we looked for a leak, and we found that there was a, um, a leak on the receiver on the roof, on the soft plug. And then also there was a leak. We were picking up traces of leaks on the quick connects for the refrigeration lines up on the roof also. So we're going to submit a quote to do that. The other really strange thing that I found was that the temperature controller, which looked like it had been there since day one, it's never been changed, so probably eight years, was set at 50 degrees, but it's maintaining 30 something degrees. The sensing bulb for that temperature controller is mounted to the insulation on the drain line. It's just strapped to it. But the drain line has a drain line heater in it. Come on, like think about it. Like that's ridiculous. So the heat from the drain line heater is coming up and warming up that temperature controller. It, I don't know what's going on. I can't believe someone would do that. Regardless, you can tell that they purposely set the control that high because there's a marker mark on it, like where to set it, which just blows my mind. So anyways, we're going to submit some quotes to replace an expansion valve. We're going to go ahead and replace the liquid line solenoid valve on the left side coil. We're going to go ahead and replace the temperature controller. We're going to replace the receiver up on the roof, the liquid dryer, and then we're going to diagnose the system further to make sure there's nothing else wrong. More than likely, that's going to be it. We leak checked the evaporator coils. Nothing was popping up. So it looks like we're okay, but it just blew my mind as to how many problems there could be in one box. It's very important that when you come to do these calls that you don't go in here with blinders on. You have to step back before you just start changing parts and really look at the big picture to see what's going on. Don't just go in there, de-ice the evaporator, throw in a fan motor, then walk away because look at all the other stuff that I found. You know, you really got to stop and think and make sure that we're very thorough when we go to do these service calls. That way we can do a better job for the customer and that way you cover your own ass because now I can go to the customer and say, hey, look, this is what's wrong. Where do you want me to start? Do you want me to fix everything? Do you want to take a chance just doing something? You know, we leave it in their hands. Then they make those decisions. I'm going to strongly urge them to go ahead and fix everything, which they will. This customer is good about that, but it just blows my mind. So that's pretty much it, guys. Have a nice day.